So you finally made up your mind you're going to give public land hunting a shot this year. The first thing I suggest is downloading a hunting app, mapping app, such as Onyx, is what I personally use. Um, and start looking at different areas of public land. Um, just looking at different parcels on downtime at work, at home, just any possible time you can to look at as many parcels as possible. Now, what I like to do is I like to go to, I don't know, say I'll start in like a 50,000 acre area. I'm looking for different things that, different parcels that offer different things as such as habitat types like trees, tree, different tree types, um, topography, uh, whether you're dealing with like big ridges, hills, um, lowlands such as like swamps, river bottoms, you name it. Just what I've personally found is when you're dealing with properties that have a more diverse habitat, I'd say give you a lot more options is finding the deer or the quality of bucks that you're looking for when you're dealing with a diverse um, region. Um, so I say, like I said, I started out with a 50,000 acre area and now I'm breaking it down to, all right, here's this main road. A lot of traffic's to be coming in and out of this area on here and say there's another road that crosses east to west and I'm breaking down to individual parcels and I'm looking, all right, if a guy wanted to hunt this spot, what trail, how's he getting there? Is it something that's favorable with the wind at that time? Um, normally during hunting, hunting season here in Michigan, that October, November, you're getting a lot of west winds, especially the north winds on like your cold fronts and stuff. But it seems that, I don't know if it's just the weekends that I'm getting to go and hunting, I'm dealing with a lot of different winds like say east and south. But east are like the rarest of them. It seemed like I had probably three weekends, including the gun opener weekend, or gun opener that I was dealing with an east wind. So look at these properties on like an access point, access standpoint. How am I getting into these spots? Is it favorable with wind? If I'm getting dealt a weird wind that I did not plan for there it's a rare wind like east how are you going to get into that spot without blowing it up letting all the deer know that hey here he comes he's trying to hunt this spot um so access now you're looking at food types now with big woods hunting you're not really dealing with a ton of agricultural on like private grounds nearby. I mean, yeah, there's pieces in the state of Michigan that aren't too far from ag or even parcels that the DNR has planted food on that public land. But just trying to get a, like in a big wood scenario, everybody's thinking oaks and acorns. Well, on a few different areas that I personally have a few years invested in hunting, we really haven't had a really good acorn crop lately. It's either a mixture of just having those weird off years when whites aren't really producing or the reds, they're not really producing this year where you have a total curveball and gypsy moss where they eat all the oak leaves to the point where it stresses the tree out so bad that all the energy that it's putting back in is regrowing those leaves and they can't produce enough energy to actually produce an acorn crop for that fall. So the deer are going to find something other than those acorns and you just have to be able to adapt and find out what exactly is the next choice for food source.
Um, so, two different ways I really like looking at um, parcels is I'm looking at a topo map and I'm looking for terrain features like ridges, saddles, um, pinch points in between bodies of water or shallow spots in bigger rivers where deer crossing. Just something that I feel is a topographic feature that's going to corral or funnel more deer through a certain area. And then I also like to dissect these parcels with an aerial. The thing that I found difficult with the aerial is that these areas, they might have an image that's three years old. And if you don't have um, experience with this said parcel, you might be looking at an image that's three years old. But like in certain spots where I'm at, where there's a good amount of timber harvest going on, I look at an aerial and I say, well, that cut's not there and this cut's not here. Well, how old is this? And that can be a difficult thing if you're looking at a brand new par property that you haven't had boots on the ground experience with yet, where you're trying to do e-scouting. So that, with that being said, I like to use both topographic and satellite to justify some of these parcels and then if I find something that is like all right the access is good it looks like it has um, the habitat type I'm looking for and the terrain kind of suits best for how I want to hunt I'm gonna go ahead and start marking possible bedding locations food sources travel routes and then I'm going to be putting tree stands or ground blinds or areas you want to still hunt through marking those on my uh, map. What I personally like to use for a lot of these features that I'm theorizing like hey I think this is that and this is that when I'm marking my waypoints I like to use a certain color. What I choose is yellow it's kind of like caution, like just something to like remind me when I'm looking at a map is like, all right, well, this isn't a hard, fast waypoint for a hunting location because it's yellow. This is just something I theorized when I was at home or not in that woods, physically out there. But once I put boots on the ground, I'm marking that with different various colors, justifying it to myself, yeah, you can put the notes, but if it's color-coded, you don't have to dig deep in each one of those notes to say, alright, this really is a, a scrape location, that really is a signpost rub location, stuff like that. So, um, so, don't limit yourself to, say, a 200-acre parcel and just push all your coins and bet in the pot on it, that that's, that, that spot is to provide you successful hunts and punch tags, because if you don't give yourself the options of moving, because say you go in there and you're scouting it, you're like, man, this spot it has everything that I want, but you got to think too, Everybody else that's looking at the same maps as you are and hunts the way you do, they're seeing those spots as well. They're at home marking them. So if you don't give yourself options with this parcel here, and I got another spot three quarters of a mile, and then I got a spot eight miles that way, and just give yourself options that you can bounce. Because, say, if you plan a weekend and you're like, alright, I'm going to go up there and scout that one parcel and you run into a bunch of trash from hunters, whether that's like candy wrappers or pop cans, beer cans, whatever, or you find a bunch of trails with bright eyes or surveying tape that are marking their um, access routes, I mean, some of that stuff isn't as 
Um, it's not as the norm as it used to be because more people are running the mapping apps where they can just mark their trail and they don't have to have all that stuff because it just keys other hunters like all right someone's obviously going this way there must be something good and then you got people encroaching on your areas um but yeah if you get to a spot where it's overran with people and you don't have that plan b c d e f g and you just rely on parcel a or plan a you can just you're setting yourself up for a lot of frustration and just you have to give yourself options to bounce it's public land somebody can move in on you plans change food sources change just mark as much different parcels for yourself so when you finally get the time to go up there and put boots on the ground you got options you didn't just waste your time and go and found out parcel A isn't what you thought it was because most of the time that's what they that's e-scouting you're not physically out there you're just theorizing hey this looks good but it's until you put boots on the ground or you go out there and hunt it you really don't know I mean it's just a continuous learning process where you have theories on it and then if you keep hunting that parcel experiences build on experiences and like, oh, this is a known spot where I've seen a bunch of does at this time of year. Because you got to be thinking, too, if I'm going to be hunting these parcels at different times of the year, like, hey, I'm going to be up here rut hunting. Well, if you're going up there to shoot a nice buck during the rut, you better know where the does are. And the does are going to be by this choice of bedding or especially this choice of the food source. And so you got to have options on possible food sources. Where are your big oak flats? Or where is this lone oak amongst this big cattail slough? Or just stuff like that. Try to break it down as much as you possibly can. That way you're just setting yourself up for making options, making moves. Because that's how, it, if you want to be successful in the big woods and on public land, you have to adapt. You cannot sit in the same tree year after year expecting a nice buck to come walking by. And yeah, there's private parcels everywhere where someone's got, hey, this is the killing tree. I shot a nice buck out of here every year. Well, that, I mean, food sources and bedding in its broken timber. You got different small blocks here and there. I mean, the big woods, it's just vast woods. So be willing and able to adapt and keep on the deer instead of pigeonholing yourself to one spot and say, hey, I'm going to live and die on this hill. Because, yeah. So I'm going to keep doing... Um, some shorter stuff like this, um, diving into different topics. If you like this content, um, give it a like, um, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel. But until next time, on the Rewood Report.